Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's topic is do I need a full frame sensor camera or not? Um, this question gets asked quite a bit when I'm, when I'm teaching photography classes. So, you know, students many times will reach out to me and say, what camera do I buy for this class? I, I don't know much about photography. Other people may have a camera already. Um, I usually recommend some kind of entry level Canon or Nikon just because they're easy to get, you know, they're not that expensive, even a used one for that matter, right? So when we're giving, you know, when, when I'm giving the class and, and we're going through pictures and I pull out pictures of my exhibits just to show composition and things like that, um, students will say kind of that story I told about the oven and the camera in my first video. If you didn't see it, check it out. Just go to the, uh, click on my picture and go to, um, you know, to my channel and check out that first video. It's uh, Secrets to Great Photography. Um, the story of the oven and the camera, right? When, when, when you're a photographer and people say, oh my gosh, you have great pictures. You must have an amazing camera, right? I, I tell this funny story about that. So um, the same thing happens in these photography classes, right? The student will look at the picture and say, oh my gosh, what kind of camera are you shooting with? And I'll show them my camera, right? It's a, it's, it's a Canon 5D Mark III. Uh, it's, it's, around, it's been around for a while. Uh, and they'll go, oh, you know, they know enough to say, oh, it's a full frame sensor, right? Um, and I'll say, yeah, yeah it is. And, oh, well, you know, I have a, a crop sensor. And so, you know, I, I don't get the images you get. Well, we're going to talk about that today. Okay. So here's the thing. The important thing at first is to know why you need a full frame sensor. If you have no clue and you just think that it takes better pictures, this is a great video for you. Um, and if you kind of know why, then let's talk about some of those things. See if they match up with your with your reasons. If they don't, if they do, uh, please leave a comment. Let me know. Comments are important too because you can let me know how I'm doing with these videos. This is new to me, so I'm trying my best to give you content that's relative that you know you can put to use right away. Right. So let's go on. So before we continue, let's talk about what is the difference between full frame sensor and a crop sensor, right? That's, you know, the first question for those of us that don't understand, right? And if you don't understand, don't feel bad. You know, you've heard these words probably before when you're looking at, you know, cameras on, you know, on, on the internet or people, you know, come and say, well, I just upgraded to a full frame sensor camera and it sounds awesome, but what does it mean, right? Well, you're going to realize after this video is done that it doesn't mean a whole lot. And so here's the thing. This is a 5D. Uh, a Canon 5D. This is the original 5D. And you're not going to be able to see in here. I'm going to turn this camera on. Um, and so when the mirror goes up, let me see if I can, I can do this. There's the sensor in the back right there, right? That's a pretty big sensor. This is a full frame sensor. What that means typically is that whatever that lens is passing on, right? The lens would be over here, right? The lens would be over here. Whatever this lens is passing on to the camera, that sensor is going to get the entire image. That's really what it means. Full frame sensor. Okay. So any camera that you buy that has a full frame sensor is a full frame sensor camera. It's going to capture whatever the lens feeds it. Now, my first digital camera SLR was a 10D and this was a crop sensor. So even the mirror is smaller. Um, the mirror is much smaller. I don't know if I can get that to you guys. Um, but the, the sensor itself is tiny too, right? Compared to, to the full frame sensor. So what does that mean? Well, think of it this way. The lens is carrying an image to the back, uh, to the inside of the camera where that sensor is. And if the sensor is smaller, then it's not getting the entire image. It's getting a piece of it, right? Somewhere in the center. So to the eye, it looks like you're doing a close up because you're getting only, think of what a close-up means, right? When you put a lens like this on your camera, it's a hundred millimeter, it's bringing things up closer. What it's doing really is instead of capturing this whole frame, I don't know if I can do this right, instead of capturing this whole frame, it only captures this much of the frame, right? So when you take this piece and you expand it out, it looks like you're bringing the, the person in closer, right? Because you're getting the center of it. You're just getting my face at this point. You're not getting the whole surrounding, right? So. So that's a crop sensor. A crop sensor is only getting a piece of the image. So when you look at it on a camera, it looks like you've gotten closer up to that image, whatever it is, okay? If you look at the image at the top, it's a full frame sensor. And you can see how the, the entire image is captured by the sensor. Nothing uh, is missed, right? 
uh, it doesn't go past it and it doesn't stay in the middle now if you look at the bottom the um, the crop sensor the crop sensor on the other hand you can see how a lot of the image is going past it right uh, so the crop sensor is only grabbing the image uh, the center part of the image so what that looks like um, what that looks like is uh, if you look at two pictures and you look at picture uh, number one it's the picture from the full frame sensor where we saw that it grabbed the entire image right and picture number two is a uh, you know the same subject uh, with the same lens uh, for, at the same distance but now with the crop sensor you can see that the camera is only capturing the centerpiece of that image and when it fills the frame it ends up looking like it's a close-up it's a telephoto image right like you uh, stepped in right? and you got less field of view right and you got closer to the subject so that's basically the effect of a crop sensor it makes things look closer I hope that's pretty clear so full frame sensor gets everything that the lens is feeding it a crop sensor gets only the center portion of what the lens is feeding it therefore making it look like you're moving closer to that subject because it looks closer up okay that's the first thing so let's dive into the pros and cons of a crop sensor okay so pros first always right the good stuff right off the bat if the image looks a little closer that means the full frame sensor is making things look closer up to you bigger right so when is that good well a camera like the 10d or or like the new you know any any rebel canon rebel in case you haven't noticed by the way i shoot canon right and does that mean that i dog the other manufacturers absolutely not um, they're all great cameras um, if you're an entry level if you're an amateur if you like shooting landscapes for you know spiritual reasons because you love walking through the woods and whatever all of that stuff any of these cameras olympus nikon canon and, and the list goes on and on right they're all fantastic um, some cameras are going to have things that you like more than others so do your research so you can buy the camera that has the things you like like wi-fi or you know whatever it is right um, and other cameras will appeal to other people but why am i a canon shooter and i'll just dive you know divert here for a second um or digress um i like the menus i like the menus they they're easy to go through um when i need something quick the things that photographers use a lot they're buttons on the outside of the camera right i don't have to go through menus looking for them in the middle of a shoot right so i love that about canon and and the glass is amazing right the glass especially now with the rf series and even the ef lenses <clears throat> amazing glass I mean I can't you know I've shot different manufacturers and I just I've taken back every time I shoot a Canon so um, that's my reason right that's just my reason it doesn't mean it's right or wrong it's we all have our reasons right and you're gonna have yours for shooting whatever camera you use. so we go back to where we were before this point the pro and effect of a crop sensor is a telephoto quality right if you like shooting uh, for example your kids playing sports a lot right uh, out in the soccer field or you know basketball or whatever then a crop sensor is going to be wonderful because you're going to put a hundred millimeter lens on on the camera which is already a close-up lens and you're going to multiply by a certain factor uh, and I'll explain that um, in, in a minute um, and it's going to make the image look even closer than if you had a full frame sensor so why not right if that's what you're doing if you're trying to get closer to animals in the zoo without necessarily sticking your your face through the cage right if you're doing all these cool things and you're trying not to get eaten um then a full frame sensor is not for you it's a crop sensor you want right because it's making everything look closer right um so so those are definitely the pros now now what does it mean how much do you multiply this hundred millimeter by to figure out what you're shooting right so the way crop sensors work is it depends on your camera like my my 10d is an apc s sensor and it multiplies the factor is 1.6 so if i put this 100 millimeter lens on that camera i multiply it by 1.6 it's now 160. now i'm just gonna just round it up you know down a little bit to 1.5 just because the math is easier because we're going to talk about different lenses here so if i had to multiply this 100 millimeter lens by 1.5 it's now 150 50 millimeter lens i'm even closer than if i had this on my 5d which is a full frame sensor right you get it so i hope you do um oh, i'm not confusing it more so 
that's really cool if you're getting close up to things, right? Now, when is that bad? What's the con? Well, the con is <clears throat> if I'm shooting a crop sensor like a Rebel camera or some of the entry-level Nikons, right, that you can buy at uh, Costco, uh, uh, Best Buy, anywhere, right, uh, B&H Photo, um, what happens when you, when you um, take those entry-level cameras and you put, say, a... Uh, let me pick a good lens here. Um, what's a good lens? Like, let's say... Hmm, I'm trying to think. If you're trying to, for example, if you're into real estate photography, right, you want to shoot a room, you want that picture to be really wide, right? You want the whole room, you want to stand in the corner, you want to get the whole thing. So you put your lens, say, uh, 35 millimeter um, on, a, on a crop sensor camera, and now you're multiplying that by 1.6, right? So you end up with, uh, let's say it's 36, just to round up, uh, that would be 36 plus 18, so about 54, so about 53, 54 millimeters. Now you've narrowed your field of view. It's no longer a 35 millimeter lens. I mean, uh, yeah, it's going to be a 54 millimeter lens, and you're not going to be able to get that room as easily, and you wouldn't even use a 35. If you were shooting that photography, you'd probably use like a 16 millimeter, right? So you put a 16 millimeter on a full frame camera, it's 16 millimeter. It's ultra wide. You're getting the whole room. You put it on a crop sensor, like one of the entry level, you know, Rebels or Nikons, and it's 16 plus 8, right? So now you're at 24 millimeters. So you've narrowed that field of view a little bit. You can't get the whole room anymore, right? So what do you do? What are you passionate about? Are you passionate about shooting wide uh, pictures? Are you passionate about close ups, right? That's going to decide whether you opt for a full frame sensor or an APC, a crop sensor, right? Or, you know, one of the other ones. Um, so conversely, pros and cons of a full frame sensor, right? A full frame sensor like the 5D or the 5D Mark III, which I shoot now. Um, um, so the pros are clear, right? The camera lens will be exactly what it says. If it's a 100 millimeter lens, it's a 100 millimeter lens. You're not getting, you know, that times 1.6 or whatever it is, right? Every camera's different, 1.3, 1.4. Um, so when I put a lens on my full frame camera, it is what it is. If it's 35 millimeter, it's 35 millimeter. There is no crop size that I have to multiply by, right? Uh, that's really cool. Now, what's the con? I mean, another pro, of course, is if I'm shooting wide angle, like we talked about, fantastic, right? Um, if I want to shoot more telephoto, I'm going to have to buy a more expensive telephoto lens. Um, the, 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 the cons, you know, uh, the negative side is, is the flip side, right? If I am looking to get really close up, you know, like I just mentioned, right? You're going to have to buy expensive glass or put a teleconverter on it that multiplies your lens by 1.4 by 2 to make it even closer, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, but, you know, those are the pros and cons. You have to decide what's important to you, right? What are you looking? Are you taking pictures mostly of your family? Maybe the crop sensor is good. You want to be a little closer to your kids without being in their face, right? Let them play over in the in the corner of the house or the, or the play yard or the park and you, and you start taking some pictures, you put a 100 you know, millimeter lens. Imagine a 200 millimeter lens and you multiply that by 1.5. That's a 300 millimeter lens. You know, buying a 300 millimeter lens is a small chunk of change, you know, if you get a decent lens, right? Um, so what a cool thing if you can just pop that in the camera and your lens, which is a 200, automatically goes to 300. Wow, that is so cool if you're looking for telephoto. If you're looking for wide, that is not cool, okay? So you get the idea, right? Uh, I'm going to give a lot of analogies to martial arts because I study Wing Chun Kung Fu and, and I, I dedicated a good part of my life to that. So, um, you know, the instructor, uh, Sifu as we call him, uh, Sensei is Japanese, so it's not Sensei, it's Sifu in Chinese. Um, so one of the things he says all the time, people ask, hey, is this the right thing I would do in this situation? And he says, depends. Is this the right, you know, uh, hand to throw? Depends. Is this the kind of kick? Depends. Uh, and people get tired of hearing depends, but the truth is it really does depend. It depends on the size of your opponent, the speed they're coming at you at. Uh, is it a male or female? Uh, because that matters, right? Because you have different targeting points. Uh, are they angled, right? Uh, are they higher or lower than you? I mean, so many things. Are they surrounded by people on their side? Because that's a different, that's a whole different defense and attack. Uh, if you have to worry about people that are around them, you know, helping them, right? So same thing with photography, right? It depends. Which one should you buy? It depends. What do you like? What glass do you already have? 
If all your lenses are wide and you wish you had a telephoto, maybe the crop sensor is cool because it's going to get you, a te uh, you know, to the telephoto range, right? If all your lenses are, you know, 100 millimeter and a 200 millimeter and you want to go a little wider, then, you know, a full frame camera might help you get a little wider, right? So um, just a lot of varying things. Keep that in mind, okay? So some, you know, some sample images uh, when we go through, if I'm looking at my, uh, you know, one of my relatives, my daughter, for example, uh, in this case, and I'm using a 100 millimeter lens, this is what she looks like with a full frame sensor, right? Um, it's, you know, it's a uh, relatively wide, I mean, it's a telephoto lens, right? But you can see stuff around her, which is kind of cool, right? And if you go to a uh, crop sensor, then this is what you're getting, right? Uh, it's not 100 anymore, it's 150. So you see the difference, right? Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, in this example, it's going to be a little different, right? I'm going to show you, this is what my daughter looks like with a full frame sensor. This is what she looks like at 24 millimeters. And this is what she looks like with a crop sensor, right? There's a big difference there. Um, at 50, this is what she looks like with a full frame sensor. And this is what she looks like with a crop sensor, right? So you, you get the point, right? Um, it, it makes a difference. Uh, so it's just, like I said, depends on what you need, what you like. We all like different things. If you have paid customers that are paying you to do a lot of, you know, uh, telephoto shots, um, then, you know, you want that crop sensor. If you're getting paid to do landscapes or um, architecture photography, buildings and in the inside of buildings, then you definitely want a, a full frame sensor because it's going to give you the maximum width. You can buy a, a 16 millimeter lens and it is a 16 millimeter lens, not a 24 millimeter, right? So one of the things we didn't talk about, full frame cameras, uh, full frame sensor cameras, um, they tend to take up more memory in your computer because the sensor is bigger. The one receiving the image at the inside of the camera, the sensor is bigger. So what does that mean? That means that your megapixel count is higher, right? There's more, that sensor is bigger, so there are more megapixels. So uh, instead of 12 megapixels or 15, you may be looking in your 20s, 30s, even 40s, right? If you look at the new uh, Canon R5, right? Mirror camera, uh, mirrorless, sorry. Uh, the mirrorless camera, DSLR is a mirror camera. Um, a mirrorless camera, it's 45 megapixels. Um, that's awesome if you have memory, right? But if you're kind of new, you don't have a, uh, you know, you have a laptop with minimum space, then the last thing you want is to be hogging up your memory on the computer with pictures, right? You go out to a park and you can easily shoot two or 300 pictures of flowers and the lake and the waterfall and you get home and oh my gosh, it's eating up your memory space. So that's a big thing to think about, right? That would be a con for a full frame uh, sensor, right? That it eats up more memory because it's higher megapixels. Um, and that would be a big pro, the full frame sensor, if you're looking to crop, digitally crop. So for example, you see how I'm in the frame here, right? If you only wanted this much of my head, but that's the only lens you had, you would take this picture and then on the computer, you would crop me just to what you would need. But here's the thing, because it's such a high uh, megapixel count like the R5, 45 megapixels, you can crop that in and still get a high resolution image, which is wonderful, right? Uh, crop sensors tend to be lower in resolution. So when you crop that, you're going to cut the resolution even further. So those are the things that matter, right? At the end of the day, right? Uh, are you going to make big pictures and you're going to sell big pictures? Or are you getting paid to do like billboards and walls and murals? Or are you just taking pictures for fun? Are, you, are they going into an album, right? Uh, four by sixes, five by sevens, eight by tens, <clears throat> even a 16 by 20. I mean, you know, the digital cameras nowadays, and especially with post-processing, you can do wonderful work. You don't have to worry. Most cameras above, you know, I would say, you know, when I had my 10D, this was a 6.3 megapixel camera. And I was shooting weddings with this thing and offering 24 by 36 images. And I was getting away with it. I mean, beautiful pictures. Um, the only thing is, you know, you had to be really careful. It had to be really sharp to begin with. And your ISO was kind of low, you know, for low light shooting, it wasn't that good. The 5D Mark III is an amazing camera for low light shooting, uh, but it's a DSLR. The whole trend now is mirrorless, right? Mirrorless, uh, and maybe we'll talk about that in another video, um, but mirrorless cameras are in and the lenses for them are in and everything's, you know, moving in that direction, right? They're quieter, they're faster. Uh, so many things, right? They're smaller too. Now, some people don't like that, but anyway, that's the thing. So if this video was uh, helpful, I, I hope it was, really, I, I sincerely hope it was. Uh, I'm thinking of questions I get asked a lot in my classes. 
and that's what I'm approaching my first videos for YouTube. Um, I want to answer questions that mean something to you, right? So if this was helpful, please like the video. It means the world to me. Subscribe, and I promise to keep these, you know, cool topics coming. Uh, later, we're going to have some interviews too with some people that do video and models and makeup artists that will give you tips if you're getting into those areas. I think that's that's cool to have on here. Um, so please keep that in mind. Um, and remember, unless you're making money off of this hobby or this art or trade or whatever you want to call it, right? You know, I call it a hobby even though I, I, I've made tons of money with it. I'm, I'm grateful for the, you know, the things I've been able, all the equipment I have, I purchased with the things I was doing with photography, um, including the equipment that you see here for the vlogging. Um, Unless you're getting paid to do a lot of this, uh, you know, think about it twice before you go and buy another camera. I'm the same way most photographers are, right? The new camera comes out. Oh, you don't think I want an R5? Oh my gosh, I want an R5, but I don't really need it. My 5D Mark III still works beautifully. And my gosh, you know, I'm still, when I look at those pictures, oh, I love those pictures. Uh, I'm not going to say the word here, right? It's not the place, but... Um, but I'm really happy with the pictures, right? And with my 10D, I can still shoot that and get beautiful pictures. I mean, you know, I don't shoot it anymore because it's a crop sensor and it's an older camera and the technology, the digit processor is slower. Um, but oh my gosh, the pictures are beautiful, right? Um, so if you don't really need it, take that money, buy another lens, buy some lighting gear, um, you know, buy some reflectors, um, uh, Buy a nice tripod that you can carry into the woods with you, like a composite, you know, like a carbon fiber tripod. Or, or if you're going to be shooting in heavy winds, get yourself a nice heavy tripod, right? Uh, it depends, again, right? Uh, but, you know, if you don't need another camera, don't, don't, don't spend it, because we've talked about that, right? Cameras make shooting nice pictures easier, but they're not the, you know, do all, uh, answer all for, for good pictures, right? It's your knowledge, your skill, your passion, uh, your experimentation. All of that is what's going to give you beautiful, beautiful pictures, right? It comes from here and from here. Uh, and of course, learn, right? Learn. We're going to talk about composition. We're going to talk about a million things. There's so many things to talk about. When I was teaching my first classes, uh, I couldn't find a book to teach the class. Some books were too, you know, basic. Others were too advanced. Others were like 500 pages and it covered everything. I'm like, who's going to read 500 pages? Um, I don't have time to read 500 pages and, and teach a class with that. Um, and then they were like 50 bucks. Forget it. Forget it. So you know what I did? I ended up writing my own, like a 100-page manual that covered everything from a little bit of history and electronics and how cameras work and optics all the way to shooting in manual, right? Um, and, and I had to do a lot of research for that. Educate yourself. That's the most important thing, right? Learn. Learn. And your pictures are just going to get better and better. You got to shoot. You got to get out there and you got to shoot. So is the full frame for you or not? Remember, a full frame sensor camera is going to give you a different picture, not necessarily a better picture. Keep that in mind, okay? Just know that and you've learned everything you need to know for this, uh, for this tutorial or demo or lesson or video, whatever you want to call it, right? Tip, uh, advice. So in summary, um, we covered what's the difference between a crop sensor and a full frame sensor, right? Uh, I, hope you, I hope that was clear. Um, which one is for me, right? Basically, right? Um, you know, why am I looking for this full frame sensor? Uh, I hope you know now, and I hope you know which one suits you better. And of course, we went over the pros and cons, right? Um, and I hope that was helpful as well. So I'll see you guys the next video. Um, I'm trying to do one of these a week. So I'll try to be as consistent as I can. At first, it may be a little tough. I may be off a couple days, but I'm going to get on it. And then hopefully uh, this will get to two videos a week and we can start putting out some really cool content. I've got a series coming that is really cool. I don't want to leak out the name now, but it's a whole different concept of video. So I'll keep doing these because these are instructional and just my, you know, pouring out my, my thoughts and everything I've learned over 30 plus years of photography. But I got this really cool concept coming out too, which is a little deeper uh, in thought uh, photography concept. So stay tuned for that. Um, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care and ciao for now.